Tonight, E3 kicks off, Facebook launches Slingshot right before it pulls it, and Amazon takes on PayPal. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 104 for Monday, June 9th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by iFixit. iFixit makes electronics repair easy with free repair guides, plus all the parts and tools you'll need. For $10 off your purchase of $50 or more, go to ifixit.com slash twit and enter the code TN2 at checkout. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed well, Facebook's first Snapchat competitor, Facebook Poke, got killed off by the company recently. Killed off as in pulled from the App Store. But they haven't given up exactly. A new app called Slingshot lets you send photos and videos to your friends and caption and draw on those photos and videos which then all disappear once you've viewed them. Sounds familiar, right? Well, here's the strange part. The app went live in the App Store today in a few countries and then was quickly pulled by Facebook. Quote, earlier today, we accidentally released a version of Slingshot, a new app we're working on is the official stance from the company. So maybe, maybe it wasn't ready for prime time, but for those who were able to install it before it got pulled, there's a unique feature that does differentiate for it from Snapchat that you can unlock a friend's message only by sending one back to them. No word yet on when the app will officially be back in the App Store, but at least we know now that it exists. Amazon is gunning for PayPal in a, in a whole new way. The company will begin managing subscription payments for startups and other companies and will allow the company's 240 pl million plus active users to use credit card details that are stored on Amazon.com to pay for services like a phone bill or a monthly music subscription. Amazon will charge a fee on each transaction that'll broaden their profits as kind of a middleman for third-party sellers and that accounts for 40% of the company's sales. Google has lifted the veil off of Docker. That's a tool that lets online software makers package their projects and services so that they can rapidly move them across multiple machines. Google sees Docker as making it easier for anybody to tap massive amounts of computing power. That's something that Google itself is already very familiar with doing. Tomorrow at a keynote speech at a conference in San Francisco, Google engineer Eric Brewer is set to unveil the new ways that Google will combine Docker with its cloud computing services, Google App Engine and Google Compute Engine. For the company, this is certainly a way of creating interest in these services, but also challenging Amazon's dominance in the cloud market. Microsoft wants to put Connect features into future Windows Phone handsets. At least one device that is codenamed McLaren will debut on a range of carriers in the U.S. later this year with some interesting features like hovering your finger over the screen to interact without actually having to touch the display. The Verge has anonymous sources that are talking about it that say the technology is known internally as 3D touch or real motion and was developed by Nokia over a number of the last years. McLaren will have multiple sensors on the device to make way for this 3D touch system, allegedly, which will be unique to its own devices, won't be available initially on handsets from other manufacturers like Samsung or HTC. Now, supported features will include some kind of interesting stuff. Answer your calls by holding the phone to your ear. Okay, I'm familiar with that with Siri already. Setting the phone down on a table to launch speakerphone or hanging up a call by just putting it in your pocket. Phones that support 3D touch will use a number of hardware sensors that allow devices to mute when they're covered by a hand or, or held to a chest or to dismiss alerts by waving a hand in front of the screen. Well, Netflix is going to stop blaming your ISP for those annoying video buffers, at least for now. Specifically, the company will suspend the display of messages that blame ISPs for congestion that's happening on its apps. They say it'll, they say it'll all stop by next week. Now, last week, Verizon called the messages a PR stunt and even sent Netflix a cease and desist notice demanding to put a stop to these messages. Netflix signed commercial peering deals with Verizon and Comcast earlier this year, but has been very vocal about its aversion to that tactic. No real surprise there. In a statement, Netflix Communications VP Joris Evers wrote, quote, We believe these ISP tolls are wrong because they raise costs, they stifle innovation, and they harm consumers. ISPs should provide sufficient capability into their network to provide consumers the broadband experience for which they pay. 
pay. Domain registrar GoDaddy filed for an initial public offering, or IPO, earlier today. Not a big surprise, but it finally happened. Revenue was $1.1 billion in 2013, up from about $911 million in 2012. The company has 12 million customers and growing. GoDaddy added 1.3 million customers last year. Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, and Citigroup are all underwriting the IPO, although GoDaddy hasn't said specifically how much it wants to raise. Coming up, no more zombies ahead. Really? No? Why Homeland Security wants the traffic sign hacking to stop. And in just a moment, I'll chat with Michael Rougeau about the fun and games that kicked off at the E3 conference today. But first, let's thank iFixit for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. They make the ProTech Toolkit. And if you don't have one, you are missing out because it contains 70 tools to help you with almost any repair or project that might come across your workbench. Even if you don't have a workbench, you want this. It includes iFixit's 54-bit driver kit with standard and specialty and security bits. Also has an ESD safe uh, set of precision tweezers, an anti-static wrist strap, opening tools to get inside a phone or some sort of a notebook or tablet or game console. You gotta go in there and fix something. These are the tools that you need. They're lightweight, they're compact, very durable. It's a gold standard for electronics work. And garage hackers use this, but so does the FBI, everybody. Everybody likes the toolkit, but most importantly, these tools are used by repair technicians everywhere. So you can you can use the same tools that they're using. The ProTech toolkit is only $64.95, comes with a lifetime warranty. With iFixit, you can just fix it yourself. You can go to ifixit.com slash twit for free step-by-step -step repair guides and all the parts and tools that you'll need. And if you enter the code TN2, that's TN and the number two at checkout. You'll save $10 off any purchase of $50 or more. That's ifixit.com slash twit. And thanks to ifixit for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. All right, joining me now is Michael Rougeau, freelance writer with Tech Radar, Digital Trends, Kotaku, and more. Hey, Michael. Hello. All right, let's talk about E3. I know you're based in Los Angeles. In fact, you're quite uh, close to the convention center, which is nice when you're covering a show like this. So so what happened? We had Microsoft kind of kicking off the week-long uh, E3 convention with some big announcements for Xbox. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Microsoft opened with Call of Duty, which is sort of predictable. Um, the most exciting thing they talked about, I mean, obviously Halo is always the biggest thing for them. Uh, people were expecting Halo 2 anniversary. Uh, what they announced was the Halo 2 Master Chief Collection, which is Halo 1, Halo 2 fully remade with the overhauled graphics, Halo 3 and Halo 4, all on one disc with 100 multiplayer maps, every map they've ever done throughout the history of the series, uh, tons of uh, additions and extra features, um, plus Halo 5 beta this December, which is exciting. Uh, besides that, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider was also a big surprise. Obviously, that, got, uh, that uh, is the sequel to the reboot that came out last year. And uh, the trailer they showed had Lara Croft basically talking to a therapist about the things that happened to her in that game. And it's it's nice to see a character, especially one that's been historically objectified, uh, it's nice to see that character uh, sort of dealt with in a, in a realistic way. Like, you know, if you went through everything that she went to, the shipwreck and getting attacked, um, like you wouldn't you wouldn't know how to deal with that, you know? And and so we're going to see how that shapes her into the into the person that she we know that she ultimately becomes. So you uh, said that was that was kind of a kind of a surprise, something a little bit unexpected. Uh, Microsoft is really looking to the future, though. I mean, we are halfway through 2014 and we're also talking about titles for 2015 next year. Yeah, it was kind of interesting. They spent the first half of their presentation talking about games in 2014 and then they started looking ahead to 2015. Uh, one of the things that was surprising there is, is Crackdown 3, which is a series that we haven't seen in a long time, but it's definitely a fun series. And then uh, it was also exciting to see, um, obviously, one of the things Sony did right last year was show all those indie games. And so Microsoft didn't want to get shown up again this year. And they had sort of a quick trailer with a look at like a couple dozen indie games that are that are coming out of the next year. Um, and it was nice also to see Microsoft focusing on games instead of trying to work entertainment and all these other things in there. Um, so yeah, it seems like it seems like they're trying to get back to their bread and butter and uh, really focus on the games and, and look to the future. So it wasn't just Microsoft that we heard from today. EA also had a presentation earlier this afternoon. What uh, what jumped out at you? From for EA, it's definitely it's it's got to be Mirror's Edge, the Mirror's Edge sequel, Mirror's Edge Two. I don't think they gave it an official title, but 
that's one that people have been waiting for for a, a pretty long time, um, and it looked great. Um, it's always nice to hear from Bioware as well. We got to see some more Dragon Age Inquisition, which we also saw during the Microsoft presentation. Uh, that game, you know, it could go either way because the first one is really well loved. The sequel, not so much. So uh, I think people are looking forward to to seeing if they can recapture the magic they sort of had in Dragon Age Origins. Um, also, they talked about a new Mass Effect game, but we really didn't see anything. They, I think they showed some concept art. Um, so apparently that's pretty far off still. Uh, and then the other interesting thing was Criterion, the developer known for Burnout and Need for Speed. They also talked about something which we really didn't get to see. Uh, but the pitch is basically they're going beyond cars for the first time. And so they, they named everything. They had helicopters. Uh, they talked about wingsuits for, you know, skydiving and so it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see what that is once they finally decide to show it. And then what about Ubisoft, who had uh, their own version of the, their kind of keynote show a little bit later today? Did they yeah, showcase that, anything that, uh, that that everyone should be excited about? Ubisoft actually just wrapped up, and uh, it's interesting because a lot of their big games, uh, such as The Division, Assassin's Creed, Unity, um, those already appeared during Microsoft. So it's kind of like, are they going to have any surprises left? Yeah. Um, the really cool thing I think that jumped out the most is Shape Up. And normally fitness games are like take it or leave it, you know, uh, nobody cares. Um, this one, they had they had Eye of the Tiger. Uh, it, it's like a rhythm game. It's like Guitar Hero meets a uh, fitness game. Uh, yeah, show the trailer here. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, they had a push-up contest on stage and it looked like something that I wouldn't hate. And that's, to me, that's unique for a fitness game. Uh, so I think that was actually the big surprise for them. Um, and then at the very end, they had a new Rainbow Six game, and it's been six years, appropriately, since we got a Rainbow Six game, uh, Rainbow Six Siege, and it, it featured a two-team multiplayer as, as both teams try to uh, take control of a hostage inside of a house. They're breaching through walls, looked like the environment was fully destructible. Uh, yeah, really, it just, it, it looked really exciting. And it, it, this is, this is the kind of experience that we're excited to get on Xbox One and PS4 now that those consoles are, are, uh, gonna get out of their first year slump. We're gonna start seeing games that don't have to be on the Xbox 360 PS3 generation as well as the Xbox One PS4 generation. Uh, stuff like, stuff like this, uh, stuff like, uh, Destiny's coming out later this year. Those are things that might not even be possible on the older consoles. So this is this is what we're looking forward to in the future, you know, as gamers. Well, we got a few people in our chat room chatting live saying, Rainbow Six, awesome. So yeah, this, <laughs> you're not the only person who's pretty excited yeah. about that. All right, well, we've got, it sounds like there's, you know, the, the Tomb Raider franchise. You're kind of excited about an exercise game that, that, that- Weirdly. Yeah, right, that you wouldn't expect. I know it's only the first day, but what do you expect from the rest of the conference this week? All right, I mean, are there any more surprises left? I don't know. You know, uh, Sony ha has their presser coming up in about an hour and a half. Um, as always, I have my fingers crossed for uh, The Last Guardian. And I actually, there's been some rumors about that uh, over the last couple of days. Is it canceled? Is it still happening? Uh, so, you know, at, for like the fifth year in, the, in a row, uh, I'm hoping that Sony will surprise everybody with that. Um, other than that, I'm not, I'm, you know, I, I'm not too sure what they're going to do. Um, for the rest of E3, I'm looking, I mean... I think I think virtual reality is where the future of gaming is really at. So that's what I'm looking forward to checking out for the rest of the show. And, and Oculus and uh, hopefully Sony's Project Morpheus are going to be here in, in full force. So that's what I'm looking forward to seeing. Michael Rougeau writes for Tech Radar, Digital Trends, Kotaku, and others. Thanks so much for being with us and giving us a little a little piece of your world from E3. Sure. Thanks very much and, for having me. And enjoy the week. Yeah, thanks for being here. All right. Finally, the U.S. government has advised operators of electronic highway signs to take defensive measures to tighten security. Now, why are they doing this? After some pranks with traffic signs. You may have seen the photo that warned drivers in San Francisco of a Godzilla attack. That happened to be on a very prominent piece of road that a lot of people take. Land highway signs across North Carolina recently were hacked to read, Hack by Sun Hacker. 
That's not really all that interesting, but hey, confusing. The Department of Homeland Security's Industrial Control Systems Cyber Emergency Response Team, or ICS CERT, this week advised cities and highway operators and other customers of digital sign maker Dactronics Inc. to take these defensive measures to minimize the possibility of similar attacks. Now, CIS also says amateur hackers might attempt to hack into other systems after the release of Watch Dogs, which is happening on May 27th, a video game from, well, which, which did happen on May 27th, which is a video game from Ubisoft that focuses on hacking critical infrastructure. CIS believes it is likely that a small percent of Watch Dogs players will experiment with compromising computers and electronic systems outside of the gameplay, said the report. Well... Life imitating art, I guess. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv with questions, comments, or feedback. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, which is tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. See you tomorrow and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.